Hello, I'm Nancy Berlinger. I'm a research scholar at the Hastings Center in Garrison, New York in the United States. I'm very pleased to provide you with this brief overview of assisted dying in Oregon and elsewhere in the United States as part of the citizen's jury on Jersey. And one thing I wanna mention at the beginning is that terminology con connected to assisted dying changes over time and it's used differently in different countries. All terms convey values. There's no neutral term. Medical aid in dying, often called MAID, is often used in the United States to describe legal provisions in Oregon and other US jurisdictions. This term reflects the role of physicians indicated by the word medical in these provisions. There are other terms that are used in the United States and in other jurisdictions throughout the world. The one I wanna mention is death with dignity because that is the name of the original Oregon law. Uh, this is viewed as a problematic term because everyone has dignity and there's no one kind of death that is more dignified than another inherently, um, but it is preserved as the name of the law. So you will see it in my presentation. So this is a map of the United States. Uh, this is the state of Oregon. I'll be talking about Oregon because it was the first state in the United States to authorize assisted dying. Um, as you can see, there are now 10 jurisdictions throughout the United States. Uh, nine of them are states. One of them is Washington, D.C., uh, also known as the District of Columbia. Um, and you can see that they cluster in uh, geographically. There's uh, a number of states in the West. There's a number of states in the Northeast. And these states are 3,000 miles uh, apart from one another. And then there's Hawaii, which is uh, uh, in the Pacific. Um, so this means that there's a lot of the United States that is not touched by assisted dying laws and probably will not be legislating um, on these issues anytime in the future. So you'll continue to see development probably regionally, but not uh, ever in the entire country. So the legal framework of the United States um, leading up to the, uh, the enactment of the first uh, uh, Death with Dignity Act in Oregon, um, I'll just mention in brief, uh, there was a very important uh, Supreme Court ruling in 1990 called the Prusan case that uh, provided for the constitutional right of patients to refuse life-sustaining treatment. Four years later, Oregon passed the Death with Dignity Act as a ballot measure, which meant people voted for it, uh, but it never went into effect. It was held up by the courts. Then three years later, the US Supreme Court ruled um, that states were not prohibited from permitting assisted dying. They ruled it was not a constitutional right, but a state could make its own laws. And then uh, Oregon was able to put its uh, older law into effect. So that became the Death with Dignity Act. We're going to look at this uh, closely in a moment. I just want to uh, call your attention at the bottom of this slides, you'll see us um, uh, links to the uh, tremendously helpful resources that the state of Oregon provides on this issue. So here's the key language in Oregon statute. Uh, this is uh, used by almost every state in the United States in some form or another. Um, terminal illness means uh, uh, diagnosed with a terminal illness that will lead to death within six months. Uh, that reflects the eligibility for hospice in the United States. It means uh, that it's a safeguard so that patients who are uh, choosing or considering using an assisted dying provision do have access to hospice care near the end of life. It's not as though it's an either or anything like that. Oregonians mean they have to be an Oregon resident, 18 years or older. Um, the fact that we talk about in the United States, uh, voluntary self-administration is, is quite important in, in this country. Patients must have the capacity to understand their decision and have the opportunity to change their mind. There's a lot of um, uh, guardrails to make sure that people understand uh, what they are electing and can change their mind. And they have to be able to swallow. Um, this is not an injection. This is not physician administered. It's a self-administered um, medication. Uh, lethal medications are prescribed by the physician. Uh, pharmacists have to be told what the pur purpose of the prescription is for because obviously it's a lethal dose. Uh, med medication availability has been a challenge in the United States because some of the drugs that have been used have become unaffordable or unavailable. That would, I would think, would be quite important on, on an island like Jersey to be aware of, of how, how that aspect of, of assisted dying would actually work. 
Um, and they must be expressly prescribed by a physician for that purpose. That means that the prescribing doctor must be uh, licensed by the state medical board. Uh, there have been many amendments uh, to the 1997 law, which is the, the whole text of the law was on the previous slide, um, because this reflects what has been learned in terms of implementation over the years. As recently as 2020, there was a waiving of the, uh, the requirement that there be two separate requests 15 days apart uh, to accommodate patients whose life expectancy is less than 15 days. So th there are things that people uh, learn from practice. Um, so a little bit about how the law has been used in Oregon over the last 10 years. Um, uh, I just happened to have the, the data from uh, 10 years ago in 2011, when 71 deaths occurred um, uh, through the uh, Death with uh, Dignity Act. That represented 0.225% uh, of total deaths in Oregon. So a very, very tiny percentage of total deaths. Now in 2019, there were 180 deaths. Now the, that is higher, it's 0. 0. 0. 0.519, but it's still a very, very small percentage of deaths. In 2020, there is a data summary that's available. It's not the full report yet, but you see it's 245 deaths. So that looks like a, a quite a significant increase, but I do wonder if it, it reflects that amendment that I just mentioned about the waiver of that 15 day period. There may have been uh, people who were not previously eligible who were now eligible. Um, a key uh, characteristic of patients who use uh, the, the Death with Dignity Act in Oregon is that cancer accounts for the, the, the main reason why uh, a patient would be eligible for hospice um, and, and fit that six month criteria. Um, most patients who use this in the United States tend to be older and they tend to be white. And there have been no uh, complaints uh, to the medical board for failures uh, to comply with the provisions of the act. So what can we learn uh, from Oregon and from other discussions in the United States? I think here are some lessons that would be helpful for the citizens jury. Uh, one is that discussion is crucial both before and after legalization. And the processes of discussion that you're having through the citizens jury process are a very good idea. Um, healthcare professionals need a lot of opportunities to discuss assisted dying in the context of their personal and professional integrity to reflect on whether they will participate or whether they will refer to others who are willing to participate and to think about the crucial issue of how they will communicate with patients who ask about or re request a prescription. Uh, public discussion should reflect on privacy and anonymity in a small place where people tend to know one another. Um, looking at examples from how this was handled in a place like Vermont, which is also very rural, um, and where there are not a lot of hospitals where people would be turning, um, are, might be helpful for Jersey. Um, implementation processes must be developed and continually improved because the, uh, the covering legislation is usually quite brief. Um, it doesn't go, get into the nitty gritty of how a patient requests something or how, what doctors do when they prescribe. So all that has to be worked out um, within the medical and uh, legal and um, other communities that, that would be part of implementation. Uh, a budget for data collection, analysis, and public reporting is a very wise move. Oregon's public health reporting is viewed as trustworthy and impartial uh, by researchers and others around the world and by people with differing views on assisted dying. And finally, it's important to remember that most people will not choose assisted dying. So this is only one small part of end of life care in, in a jurisdiction that legalizes. So thank you for this opportunity to provide you with this very brief overview. And I look forward to talking with you uh, later in this week uh, for a more full discussion. Until then, best wishes.